everyone and welcome to another episode of Rift News, the show you most likely decided to watch because all the gaming conventions are over and now you're wondering, how do they relate to League of Legends? Spoiler alert, they relate in some really cool ways. But before we get to Mark Merrill presenting at an Xbox convention, let's first talk about what is happening in League. Last time we spent a lot of time talking about hair. Because of that last time we didn't really have a lot of time to talk about Snow Moon. So now, let's dive right into these. As you may know, Snow Moon is part of the Blood Moon universe, and there you have different orders worshipping different moons. Cain's skin is based around this. He was a cultist who almost completed his communion with the Blood Moon. But then he got ambushed by the Snow Assassins and he got inducted into the Snow Moon Order. And that's the story behind the two forms. It's a choice between the Blood Moon and the Snow Moon Order. His art got a tiny update since the last PBE cycle. The scythe now has a glowy orb inside it. The model itself is quite good. I really like the white and red spell effects that reflect on the two moons. But of course, the fun part are the transformations. You can choose to embrace the blood moon, at which point Kane gets overtaken by a blood moon demon. From this point on, the skin is treated as a proper blood moon skin, with fully crimson demonic runic spell effects. But you can also choose to embrace the snow moon. This will turn Kane into a snow moon assassin. In this form, all his spells become icy, but they still retain the red runic effects. Honestly, the alternative world building behind this skin is amazing. So massive props to the writer who came up with the idea. Then we get Ilawi. Ilawi is the high priestess of the Snow Moon Order. She is trying to cleanse the world from the insanity of the Blood Moon, which is exactly what you can see in her recall. The model itself is really good. The spell effects have a cool twist on the winter theme, but I like the tentacles the most. They are icy, but they have the red petals circling around them. Also, when someone gets their soul ripped out, the entire summoner's rift gets icy for them. That is a really cool touch. And then there is Caitlyn, perhaps the most boring of all of these. And that's mainly because Caitlyn has the fantasy of sniping people. If you give her a skin with a magical theme, it just doesn't fit her that well. The same thing happened with her lunar skin. Still, even though it looks like a spell, her Q looks quite good. And the icy sound effects make it even better. Her traps also ensnare her enemies with ice. And her ultimate has a nice snipey moon above her target. But that's about it for her. Besides the snow moon skins, you may also remember that there is the new Ashen Knight Pantheon which some people do believe is quite close to the Ruined Pantheon, although this one is a bit more… ghastly. Of course, all of these skins also have their own chromas, but all of them look a bit out of place. And that's because the Snow Moon skins have the theme of white and red, so you can't really uniform their colors. So, the chromas have the dual theme of… whatever. But this is where we get into a brand new segment we get to talk about the new Mythic rotations. In case you forgot, Riot will be rotating skins in the Mythic Essence shop. And right now we have two old Prestige skins available. Those are KDA Evelyn for 150 Mythic Essence and Pulsefire Lucian for 125. Then there are two Mythic skins, which are Dreadnova Darius and Hextech Ziggs, both for 100 Mythic Essence. And then there is the last skin, which is also the newest skin. Once again, that is Ashen Knight Pantheon. Okay, so literally six minutes ago, Riot also released a new teaser for the next champion. This is the one that lives above Oyster Bill's Oyster Shack. This literally reveals nothing. But hey, we can see the silhouette of the champion and we can see that it is most likely a female champion. Once again, what we know so far from all the teasers and the stories, it is some kind of a champion who possibly has multiple hands and she's holding a laughing jar. I'm not sure if you can see any of that in the video, but at least that's what was teased in the story with TF and Graves. So if anything, I am very much surprised that the new champion is already being teased. We only just got Belveth. But that's all I can really say on this. It's literally a 12 second long teaser. So now, on with the rest of the video. Next we can mention that since her release, after some adjustments, Belveth reached 50% win rate in only one week. So from now on, we'll see if she gets overpowered after people master her. And speaking of Belveth, Riot also released a post where they talked about her design. 
There they talked about what she is, how she works and what's her purpose. You know, things you would know if you read her lore. But then they also showed us some of the early concepts. And here you can see that she was supposed to be a voidy queen from the very beginning. So her becoming a monster was Riot's decision to pivot away from this. If you ask me, this was a really good call. I'm not saying that those concepts are bad. I'm just saying they would be a bit more stereotypical. In the post they also mentioned that they pulled out an iced champion from a very 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 long ago. A Void Ray. If you are at least 20 years old, you may remember this one from the old Battlecast teasers. Back in the day people thought that was Battlecast Anivia, but now we learned it was actually an iced champion, who would 10 years later become Belveth. This makes me wonder, why didn't they actually give Belveth a Battlecast skin? Then they also showed us the concepts for her fish, they are all oddly terrifying, nothing new there, and then they mentioned that her head is a facade that she made after consuming humans. And then they go into the sounds. Basically her sounds are a combination of Kaisa Velkos and Rek'Sai screams. And at the end of the post they also go deeper into her animations. There is so much to pick apart here that I might make a separate video talking about this. So maybe in the next video we finally get to talk about thighs. But that's it for the post about Belveth, so now let's talk about the reason why you are here. The Xbox Game Pass. I'm sure that among the Starfield and Silksong hype trains people were excited that Riot is joining the Microsoft family. No? Just Pickle Rick again? Well, in case you missed it, the Xbox Game Pass is giving some awesome bonuses to the average Riot fan. If you link your Xbox account to Riot with the Game Pass, in League of Legends you will unlock all champions. But it doesn't really unlock them all. It essentially pretends that every champion is on the free rotation. So once the Game Pass expires, you will go back to only using the champions you bought. So if you want to get the champions permanently, you still have to buy them. The same thing goes for Wild Rift. The Game Pass will also allow you to play every champion there. That is, as long as the Game Pass is active. In Legends of Runeterra you get all the starting decks unlocked. You don't get any cards from the expansions and that is for a very obvious reason. Legends of Runeterra is so fair for the players that it is struggling to make money. So giving you the starting decks is all it can really do. Then for TFT you will get selected little legends unlocked. We still don't really know what that means, but I assume it will unlock all the little legends besides the legendaries and besides the latest releases. So none of the chibis, none of the legendary fancy versions and no dragons. And finally for Valorant you will also get all agents unlocked there. But once again it only allows you to play as the agent. You don't get any of the other rewards from their individual passes. So to fully unlock them with all the rewards you still have to level them up. Now while that is it for the game pass that is not it for Riot's awesome games. Because Hextech Mayhem got its first DLC. Or three to be exact. Each mini DLC includes three new songs and a skin. There is Popstars themed around KDA. This includes the songs Popstars, More and Baddest. Then there is Zegens Never Die themed around the world's anthems. This includes Phoenix, Rise and Legends Never Die. And then there is Get Zinxed themed around Riot's animated clips. This includes Get Jinxed, Giants by True Damage and Piercing Light. If you are not sure what Piercing Light is, remember the 10th anniversary. I think you know. Now despite Hextech Mayhem being a short 2 hour game, I have about 10 hours in the game so I think my opinion should matter at least a little bit. Hextech Mayhem is fun for all of you who like rhythm games. And for the small overlapping demographics of people who like rhythm games and League you will really like it. Now when it comes to the DLC itself, I don't think the DLC alone is what would sell you the game. It is honestly really awesome for people who already like the game. But the DLCs are a bit more advanced. 
The basic versions of the songs are relatively simple so that anyone can play them. But if you go into the full action mode, these songs are brutal. With Get Jinxed being probably the hardest song of the entire game. The songs themselves are awesome too, because when you get on a streak they get a metal track on top of the bass song. So here we are essentially getting an enhanced version. So overall I am really happy we got more support for Hextech Mayhem. But if you ask me what Hextech Mayhem really needs, it is modding support. I would love to see people make custom songs just like what they do in FNF. But for now the DLCs will do. Now we are waiting for Silver Scrapes and Pentakill to make it in. But that is it for Hextech Mayhem, so now onto the other games. When it comes to TFT, we only really got the new showcase. This is a short video that shows all the boards and it also shows dragons. There is nothing new here. However, it is cool to see that TFT is still pulling off amazing numbers. It seems like the popularity of the game is still going up. And I wonder if it's because the dragon lands or the chibis. But that's it for TFT, so now onto Wild Rift. In Wild Rift they have their own esports event. For completing the in-game missions you can get a spawning emblem, an icon, a bobble and two emotes for Vi and Yasuo. And all of this arrived with its own esports cinematic. To be honest the Wild Rift cinematics were always awesome, especially the latest one with Nasus. So it's great to see that the new Icon Global Championship cinematic is amazing too. Unfortunately nothing is really new in Legends of Runeterra so let's move on to a new post from Riot CEO. There Niccolo essentially talked about the future of Riot's jobs. He mentioned that they are going back to hybrid in-person collaborations. Which essentially means that after the situation in the world got manageable, they can start working together in person again. He then explained how much it actually helps with the development of their games. Since Riot's work is interconnected between the game designers and the graphic designers and the narrative team, home office can only get you so far. And the truly creative ideas get born when everyone is working together. As an example, Niccolo mentioned that in-person excitement about a project was the key to TFT being born. If Teamfight Tactics was made from home office, they may have not had the courage to relocate resources and to release it. With that said, they are aware of the dangers of working together. So their Mondays and Fridays stay as flex days. And during those days you can decide yourself whether you want to work from home. He then talked about how awesome their offices are in Dublin, Paris and Seoul. And he mentioned how their gaming sessions help bond people together. They also opened up two new places in their LA campus. One themed around Legends of Runeterra and the other themed around Valorant. And then he mentioned that they are still trying to open new places in Asia. Lastly Niccolo mentioned that Riot had a company wide trip into Spain. There they had a lot of presentations and a party. Where even Zed himself attended to make music. And at the very very end it was mentioned that Mark Merrill is coming back to be the president of games. At Riot Games. We knew about this already but once again it was confirmed that Trindamir descended from paperwork into a bit less paperwork but more games. And that's pretty much it for the post. And that's it for this episode of Rift News. We got some cool new skins on PBE, Belveth was released into being okay so far and Hextech Mayhem got new songs to jam to. But most importantly the summer has arrived. So Riot I am still waiting for the event. 